supply roof. Attempting to write this sh simple, short essay has proven to be neither simple, nor were most of the results short. For starters, asking why anything is such an impossibly penultimate question, one whose answer constantly morphs and seems ever-present yet ever-elusive. It is often the foundation of faith, so much so that I suspected an ulterior motive in its asking. Why is something I remember asking from the very start of memory, an obsession that I, in my youth, even wrote poems about, and one that continues, perhaps ironically even stronger, in my definition of myself as a secular being. To now take such an overwhelmingly powerful word and couple it with the most beautiful, wonderful, complex, and to my ears musical word in my limited lexicon, Ruth, seems a challenge impossibly unanswerable, and at the same time equally absurd for even needing be asked. Often, sometimes sarcastically, and sometimes as a contemplative, comparable to a Zen cone, I have stated that the only true answer to why is because. And so it would seem that any serious response should, at least, start with that word. Having decided this, my essay was, in my mind, complete, though very short. The answer, capitalized there quite deliberately, was because love. I guess maybe it's hard to define, you know, when you fall in love with someone. It's not always about the things that people can obviously see. I personally think that falling in love is fate, and I think those two were very meant to be. There's another story. About two years ago, after we asked the weekly ritual question, if you were seeing anyone, <laughs> that you shocked us by saying, yes, as a matter of fact, for about six months. <laughs> and then you went on to say, I found the woman I want to marry. Very special little girl, very conscious little girl. I remember nursing Ruth and her level of awareness was absolutely amazing. And so maybe some little children grow into that, but she had it as a newborn. Well, I just think she's very in her heart and very conscious and has been from the beginning. It doesn't seem that long ago that I sat in the cafeteria with a vivacious young freshman. I'd love to say I was the wise old sophomore, but Ruth had spent past two years at boarding school, so she was actually my senior when it came to being alone. She took to the challenge of college the same way she's taken to every challenge I've ever seen her face. With indomitable will and endless gumption. I remember the summer evening she showed me a picture of some guy she met on the internet. And she was thinking of meeting up with him in person. The next time she spoke of Matt, her voice had changed. I'd listened to her talk about guys before, but this one was different. He's kind of a Renaissance man. He loves the art, he loves science, he loves technology, and, and he just has a passion for learning, a, a, a passion for he has a, a dedication that I can only marvel at. I think she loves that he's both masculine and that he can cry. And that he's very sensitive in that way. I think she loves that. My brother was, at heart, a true romantic. And he was very particular about what he was looking for in a woman. It took him a long time but I'm happy to say he finally found everything in Ruth.
My husband and I met when we were 14 years old. And years ago, in the 60s, doing a collage, and I remember there was a poem. We were very tired, we were very merry. We'd rode back and forth all night on the ferry. And I ate an apple, and you ate a pear of a dozen of each we'd bought somewhere. And the sky went wan, and the wind came cold, and the sun rose dripping a bucket full of gold. When Ruth first met Matt and moved in with him, I went to visit her at the tip of Manhattan. And there on the wall, if you've ever seen it, at the tip of Manhattan, we were very tired, we were very merry, and it's right there. And I looked at Ruth and I said, that's so unbelievable that I would have chosen that poem and then you would have found a husband. And in the decoupage, there's a picture of a bride. So all these connections, I just really got how much Ruth and Matt are meant to be. She is just a delight. She's a wonderful person in and of herself. But the two of them together is just a, a chemistry that is magical. As a parent, I've known Matthew from the day he was born. He was a happy baby. He's found a lot of happiness in his life, but absolutely nothing that could compare to what has engulfed him since, uh, since he and Ruth met. As a parent, nothing can make you happier than, than seeing your child happy. And, and we have never seen him this happy in his life, and he's had a happy life. Here rustling. <laughs> yeah. Oh, are we? Oh, I was so close. To... Okay. <laughs> I know Ruth is truly the one for Matt, as every time they are apart, she's always on his mind. Even when we were partying in Vegas, or more recently, here in New York for his bachelor party, as we were all joking around in the limo, my brother paused and said, I wish Ruth was here, she'd really enjoy this. Ruth, though I've only known you a relatively short time, you are a fun, caring, and Definitely an interesting person. Above all, you make my brother happier than I've ever seen him. I'm glad to have you as part of the family. From what I've seen, Matt is tender and kind, and brilliant and so funny. And most importantly, he sees Ruth, really sees her for the unique and beautiful soul that she is. You know, for their ketubah, they got a, a, a yin and yang. We got them, uh, you know, conflicts with yin and yang because that's really what their relationship is. It is just such a, a perfect fit. Um, you you look at them together. There's nothing but love. I mean, the, the ceremony today was just, and I had the benefit of seeing it from two feet away. Uh, it was just incredibly, uh, incredibly touching to see the, uh, the the love between them. She had a pretty interesting childhood because her grandparents were very Catholic. We raised her Catholic to a point, but we were also transcendental meditation teachers. So we, she used to tease that she was a Hindu Catholic because <laughs> she had this very spiritual parents 
and then very religious grandparents. And so she sort of was exposed to a lot of different things. And I was lovely being introduced. I've never been to a Jewish wedding, and now my own daughter's wedding was one. I loved the whole ceremony. This is the culmination of one phase of their relationship and the start of another, and it's really seamless. So I'd like you just for a minute to think of someone from whom you have sometime in your life received unconditional love. Someone from whom you felt just total love and acceptance and approval. And you know it's the right person because you kind of smile inside when you think of them. And I know these two know who it is. And now, here is my secret. It is only with the heart that one can see rightly. What is essential is invisible to the eye. My dear friends, Matt and Ruth, you stand here today before all the people who love you. You stand before three great traditions. You stand before God. You are blessed to have found each other. So now I'm going to ask you before all of us to state your intentions. I, Matt, take you, Ruth, to be my lawfully wedded wife. I, Ruth, take you, Matt, to be my lawfully wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. <laughs> You will now exchange rings that signify that you are husband and wife. These rings are more than a precious metal. They are a precious symbol of seamless, endless flow of love and caring that will hopefully nurture you all the days of your life. As you place the ring on the finger of the one you love, please repeat these words after me. Anidodi. Anidodi. Vidodili. Vidodili. I am my beloved. I am my beloved. And my beloved is mine. And my beloved is mine. I betroth you to me forever. I betroth you to me forever. I betroth you to me. I betroth you to me. With steadfast love. With steadfast love. And compassion. And compassion. I betroth you to me. I betroth you to me. In faithfulness. In faithfulness. Anidodi. Anidodi. Vidodi li. Vidodi li. I am my beloved. I am my beloved. And my beloved is mine. And my beloved is mine. I betroth you to me forever. I betroth you to me forever. I betroth you to me. I betroth you to me. With steadfast love. With steadfast love. And compassion. And compassion. I betroth you to me. I betroth you to me. In faithfulness. In faithfulness. By the power invested in us as three clergy people, and in accordance with all of our traditions and cultures and faiths, we proclaim that you are married, now married in the sight of God and all of humanity. That's the formal way of saying informally. You're now married in the Catholic faith. You're married in the Jewish faith. You're married in the Buddhist tradition. You guys are very married. <laughs> First of all, just a really big congratulations. And there are so many people that we are so happy are here tonight. 
We also wish that our parents and grandparents could be here tonight. Since they can't, I decided to take something that my father wrote in the family Bible for us to find, and they're just his words, straight from his heart. And I'm sure if you were here tonight, it's what he would say to you. Love and be loved. Never hate. Keep faith. Be happy. And always live life of honesty and respect. And you will come out on top. It's just a complete non-judgmental openness. The things that unfortunately some people in society care about, race, religion, all that, never gets in their way, okay? They look for people who are, who are interesting, who are, who are good people, uh, who, who they share a kinship with, and those people come from, you know, every place, sometimes the most unlikely place, but you know they are completely open to that if you are if you're a good person if if, uh, if you like the things they like if uh, you know if it's easy for them to to relate to you if there's ways that, that they think they can help make you better or you can help make them better and and those are the only things that, that matter so you end up with with people from all all different uh, all different walks of life uh, it's certainly not a, uh, a homogeneous group of, of friends. And, and that's really part of the magic of, of their relationship, is that they are so open to that. This whole thing has seemed very formal, and yet, how beautiful was the ceremony that in such a formal setting, it became very heartfelt and informal. Take off your jacket, Matt, give it to Ruth. Everybody's wrapped up and just um, very present and in their heart. Nothing stuffy, nothing pretentious. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Watching them together today, obviously we've seen them over the last year frequently uh, together and the relationship is special, but I, I gotta tell you when they were uh, when they were under the chuppah today and, and the ceremony was unfolding, just watching the two of them just get be so totally and wonderfully absorbed in each other and, and, and so connecting. I mean, it's, it's almost scary to see, to see the wonder of their relationship, but it's, it's a good scariness that they should never lose, and I don't have any reason to believe they will ever lose. First of all, to all our friends, all our family, all our extended family, everyone who came out to celebrate with us, thank you. Uh, the love that we feel that's in this room. It wouldn't be the party it is without you. It wouldn't be the joy it is without you. So thank you all for that. And I would like to thank Jim and Rosie for making this possible and hosting this lovely event. Also to my mom and dad, thank you so very much for these beautiful flowers. And how about that band? Hey, are we partying or what? So thank you, Mom and Dad, for that and for every other little thing. Both families have been so wonderful in this. Uh, you know, I think a wedding is all about family. And uh, we both come from some pretty good ones. And there's a lot of long lines of love and happiness in them. We're proud to hopefully continue that tradition for a very, very long time. There where the waves shatter on the restless rocks, the clear light bursts and enacts its rose, and the sea, circling, shrinks to a cluster of buds, to one drop of blue salt falling. O oh, bright magnolia, bursting in the foam, magnetic, transient, whose death blooms and vanishes, being nothingness forever, broken salt, dazzling lurch of the sea. You and I, love, together we ratify the silence. While the sea destroys its perpetual statues, collapses its tower of wild speed and whiteness. Because in the weavings of those invisible fabrics, galloping water, incessant sand, 
we together make the only permanent tenderness. So to you, Ruth and Matt, may on the sea of life we be forever each other's personal tenderness. Her smile can brighten a room, just as the sound of her voice can brighten my cloudiest day. Or do I simply share how the first time we kissed, and every time since, my mind, normally a jumble of various thoughts, instead can only think, wonderful, 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 and even still more wonderful, What's and that? even still a cell phone ringing. What's that? Back up one. <laughs> yes, we'll, we'll, we'll pick that back up as a pickup point. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, I can clearly not do The wine in front of you. You would know that I would know that you were lying when you said that. You are from Australia. <laughs> uh, an island peopled entirely by criminals. Now I'm paraphrasing. But... <laughs>